in that section of the program where we were taking uh, greetings from ecumenical guests. As you know, the Council for World Mission works in collaboration with many other organizations. And so I'll hand over to the General Secretary so that he can lead us in the process of calling our friends, our partners, to come forward and give us greetings. Thank you, Moderator. The Task Force Mission, uh, we are participating in God Mission together with two of our sister organizations in strategic partnership. One is SIVA and another partner is UEM, United Evangelical Mission in Germany, based in Germany. The SIVA uh, has been founded as the first decolonized form of mission structure in 71. During the 60s, 1960s, I mean, the Commission on World Mission and Evangelism of the World Council of Churches <coughs> had some discussion how to decolonize our mission. In this discussion, our brothers and sisters from Africa, particularly Presbyterian Church of East Africa, strongly urged the equal partnership of churches, particularly the urging about missionary moratorium, the seas for the five years sending mission, missionaries and money to Africa so that African churches can stand up with their own feet. When we face these challenges of decolonizing missionary structure, SIVA take the courageous and also the creative ideas that transformed the former structure to the equal partnership of churches in mission in the name of community of churches in mission. After SIVA, London Missionary Society, at that time CCWM, was so much inspired by the courage to try the SIVA, and we followed the footsteps of SIVA, and we transformed ourselves in 77. So we have uh, General Secretary of SIVA, amongst us, Reverend Claudia Schultz. So now I would like to invite her deliver greetings to the assembly. So, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Bonjour. Oui, tout en fait, c'est exactement ça. So, dear moderator, Reverend Lydia Neshangwe, I'm so pleased to be here. Dear General Secretary, Reverend Doctor, Seth Kohn, dear delegates, dear honorable member of the board, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, thank you for the opportunity to give me the floor to address a few words of greetings. The president of SIVA, the pastor Michel Bobo from Yuna, uh, Église Methodiste Unie de Côte d'Ivoire, the executive con council and the secretariat team in Montpellier in France greet you all in the holy name of the Lord. It is a great joy and an honor for me to participate in your General Assembly, the first in person in eight years. It is certain that after the time of COVID-19 pandemic, we got used to see each other through a screen. <coughs> Fortunately, these tools exist, but nothing replaces the real meeting and in person. It's really a rising to life when we can feel and hug 
each other. And I see that very often here these days. So the General Secretary already started to say some things about SILA, but perhaps I can add some more details. I would say that we have exactly a long collaboration, that's right. And we have also members here in CWM that are also in Siva due to the history. For example, the Church of Zambia, where are they? Zambian? I don't see them. I outside. The Church of Madagascar, FGKM, the Church Maui in French Polynesia, and the Church of Mauritius are also members of the Siva. Siva is in a way, so the older sister of CWM because it was founded in Paris in 1971. It was the end of the Société des Missions Évangéliques de Paris and who gave birth then to SIVA and to Devon. Now it is a community of 36 churches spread over 25 countries and four continents including 17 African churches. They are also members of the All African Church Conference. Our desire is sharing in action the name of the Gospel. Many of our member churches are very small and operate in minority contexts. So, we support them, empower each other, and help them to get out of their isolation, linked to societal or geographical context. We share our wealth, our resources to carry out common actions to, to the entire community in numerous concrete pro projects. The General Assembly which took place in Joseph Fors de Vaz last October in Ivory Coast, voted as a common action for the next five years inhabit creation differently. So we have really another focus that you have here with the Onesim project. But it's interesting. I think we can inspire each other. We must recognize the interconnectedness of all creation and our responsibility as stewards. For the late theologian Jürgen Moltmann, God is present in all things and all things are in God. All creation is linked to God and its beauty reflects the infinite beauty of the Creator. Inhabit creation differently. The common thread for our coming years of Siva is inspired by Genesis 2.15. Indeed, for several decades, ecological just in issues have taken on increasing importance in public debate. Various pollutions, climate change, further accentuating existing social injustices. The development of eco-anxiety in Europe and as a political consequence, a withdrawal of oneself. The current context in which our societies find themselves highlights the need for a collective awareness. This crisis we face today is also a crisis of spiritual values, of our relationship to others and to ourselves and to God. The care we take, or not, of the environment in fact affects the quality of our relationship with God with others and with the creation itself. It touches the heart of our faith in God and our love for God. So all together in Siva, 
and even wider. We try to do different things about this common action. We want to encourage reflection and action in favor of a way of living respectful of creation, the gift of God. And we do this also on the grassroots level. And we develop a Christian faith that considers creation and discerns the presence of the Holy Spirit there. This week we had a third regional seminary in Togo for different people to work, to act, to reflect and to have ideas together about this region for better inhabiting a different language. And in September we will be in Madagascar with the countries from the south and west and uh, east Africa. It is important to carry out this reflection and question the actions of the churches in matters of ecology and the safeguarding of the creation. This back and forth between word and common action will constitute a guarantee of the quality of the results obtained and the effects and impacts that they can do induce. Yes, you remembered, Joseph, that CWM, UM and SIVA have been collaborating already for a long time. Their first joint consulting was in 2000. And for 40, 24 years now, they are already co financing the missionary church chair, sorry, in the Ecumenical Institute in Bosay, in Switzerland. Our links are strong and our exchanges regular. And I give really thanks here for the work carried out by our predecessors, Colin Cowan and Desmond van der Water, and you know the people who were there for the Siva also. Today, we want to create new forms of training together for a wider audience. We are also planning to organize other actions together, such as conferences or invitations to our various seminars and youth camps. We need to encourage and to support each other. So I really thank, also in my personal name, CWN especially Joseph and Lydia, for all the sharing and empowering you give to me and to see. Thank you once again for allowing me to speak, for being with you during this General Assembly, which I wish to continue rich in exchanges and in blessings for God. Thank you very much. Very much, Claudia and the organization SIVA, which is like the French counterpart of the Council for World Mission, which basically brings together the French speaking churches in the various French speaking countries around the world. I have great pleasure, brothers and sisters, in introducing our treasurer, the Council for World Mission treasurer. He was not able to be with us at the beginning. But he is finally here, and he arrived last night all the way from Tuvalu, which is out in the Pacific. And so I want to introduce you. 
His name is Mr. Silinga Kofi, and he comes from Tuvalu and has been serving together with me on the board in the last four years as the money guy. <laughs> so he is a very important person, and he and I will be doing this for the next two days before we hand over to the next people. So thank you very much, and a big welcome, Silinga. Thank you, Madam Moderator, for uh, introducing our beloved treasurer. Now, uh, I would like to invite the observers from the possible five new member churches in the future. So, I would like to invite uh, the leaders of the church to deliver greetings to the assembly. Because we are running late, please keep the strictly maximum three minutes. My opponents. I would like to invite Reverend Daniel Change, uh, Chains, uh, the uh, moderator of Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. In the interest of time, all protocols observed. <laughs> in this fast-paced changing world, along with the many changes which we experience as individuals, the church in the world is constantly being challenged to keep in focus the purpose for which it was built in. Wherever the church exists, and sisters and brothers, I mean globally, there must be evidence of love, peace, justice, integrity, equality, and fair play. Is that so, members? Yeah. Yes. They ought not to be just an appearance of these rich values or qualities or traits. But there must be real as well as genuine. And we as believers must extend these qualities and traits to all. Since we have gathered here, as we are being raised, let us help others to rise. As the Council for World Mission sits to discuss and to make projections for the future, may we be challenged to work in partnership so as to empower all those to whom we have been sent. The church, the call out by God, let us work toward identifying, isolating, and overcoming the obstacles of injustice, oppression, and all other forms of exploitation from among and within us. As believers, we have been given from on high God's indwelling power and work in our lives. And it is this power which would help us all to remove the negative forces that seek to destroy God's mission in and to the world. In Trinidad, Madam Moderator, we will say Madam Moderator, we will say General Secretary, our General Treasurer, and all the members of the board. 
we extend our gratitude to you for recommending that the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago be upgraded from the status of observer to full membership. On behalf of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago, I extend warmest greetings to you on the occasion of your conference. And it is our prayer that the God who has started this good work in you will bring his work to completion. Greetings to all. Now I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ken Ben, the General Secretary of the Cook, Cook Island Christian Church. There is a saying, a man with a long speech is a man with many problems. <laughs> I have been compliant to the request that has been put forth. Before everything, the word of God says in the book of Psalms 118, verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to have confidence in man. <clears throat> what happened in the garden of Eden? Man took the book from the center. A calling for us, brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to put God back in his original position. Put him in the center and put Christ in the head of the church. On behalf of the Kukana Christian Church, what I'd like to say, Madame Matrena, thank you. General Secretary, my dear brother, Dr. Doctor. Doctor, I'd like to say thank you for the kind invitation. And I extend that invitation to come to the Cook Islands at the end of the year. And also the General Treasurer would like to say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would like to say thank you once again. It's a privilege for us to come here. Three things that is happening back in the Cook Islands. Number one, we are following the footsteps our ancestors have taken the gospel to our sister islands. Firstly, I want to say thank you, Taiti, for sending the great warrior Papi that made a difference. 1821, you brought the gospel to us. And today, on the island of Malaya, we are celebrating the 200 years. 200 years where to from now, the Cook Island Christian Church is going back to revisit the sister islands where the gospel was preached 200 years ago. The gospel that you brought 200 years ago, we're bringing that same gospel. Papa is said, the son of man cometh to seek the lost and to save. And 200 years later, that same gospel was preached back in the Cook Islands last year. Today, back in the Cook Islands, Mangai is celebrating the 200 years together with the delegation from Papua New Guinea. So what I'd like to say, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and to say thank you once again. And may God bless everybody. Like I've said, a man with a long speech is a man with many problems. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you have eaten well. <laughs> They have eaten John Williams and John Harris. <laughs> so now I would like to invite uh, Reverend Colin Callan, uh, General Secretary of the Presbyterian Church in Vanuatu. Longo, you may stand up. In Gordon's time, that was uh, 
Adi Sang Bodo, Wong Kandri, Indigiri Padi Presiden Jenderal Kanwatu, Fodi Tu Yesebo, Right Reverend Na Lydia, Miss Samway, Sita Bia Modrena, Reverend Doctor Josip Kiong, Sita Bia Modrena Sekretari. Reverend Teresa, and also the two uh, the representative of the host on behalf of the President Church of Vanuatu, I bring greetings from uh, PCV Modreda, Pastor Simon Fanny, and the church all across the wide set islands of Vanuatu. Firstly, thank you very much for inviting us to be part of this uh, CWM Assembly as observers. We all have long histories to do with the LMS, the Presbyterian Church of Vanuatu. Its vision, its traditional approaches in ministries, in so many ways and times and experience, we still have the influence and the character of the LMS missionary. And on this very special occasion, as being part of our of Seba, I want to thank our brothers from the up end of the Polynesian country, <coughs> namely the Tongans, the Samoan, and um, Cook Islands, those of you whom have sent missionaries, uh, teachers who aid uh, to assist the missionaries to come over to Vanuatu. And we actually have started the journey of Christianity since 1800. This past 100 plus years has been the most fruitful. The church at this stage is the largest church in the country, Vanuatu. And I believe one of the largest Presbyterian churches within the Pacific itself is the Presbyterian Church of Vanuatu. We thank God for the investment and the lives and sacrifices of those who have made it to ensure people of Vanuatu receive the gospel and grow in the life of the gospel to this day. We're looking forward to see how you continue to uh, uh, see us as part of this fellowship and we are praying for what this uh, uh, gathering will finally say to our partnership in the mission. And all for conclusion, whatever the, the end result, whether you accept us to be a member or just to be an observer. It doesn't change the fact that we are elements, children. May God continue. Bless your leadership and those who will be uh, restricted after this general assembly, the future of the elements. <coughs> Thank you too much. May God okay. bless you all. Thank you. Uh, can you Marina. Okay, okay, can I move guys? Can I move? See how can I just like the other thing. Also invite the secretary. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you for allowing me to be part of this uh, Fellowship. Uh, Mr. now I would like to invite uh, Reverend Dr. Morris uh, Tabangdang, uh, who is the president of the Christian Church of Mauritius.
actually does. There is a saying in Africa that goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. The Evangelical Congregational Church in Angola actually received its first missionaries in 1880. Since then, the church has grown. But because of uh, colonialism, language barrier, and everything, we are isolated in Angola. Yes, if we speak in terms of our membership, we are over two million, but uh, that according to the sense of uh, 2014, now this year we are having a sense again, and so we believe that the numbers will change. It is a honor and a privilege, humbling experience to come and to address the assembly. Actually, the psalmist has a reason when he says how good is when brothers live together. We want to live together regardless the problems that we face in the language and the others. We want to live together. This morning, we spoke with the General Secretary and he sent his greetings to this assembly. Uh, I thank you all. Yes, uh, we expect that the, uh, the first annual uh, members meeting to next year uh, hopefully invite all of five churches as our member family of the Council for World Mission. Until that time, we will go through the due process engaged in our physiological dialogue and uh, bringing our fellowship. Now, moderate. Uh, let's give them five minutes. Now, moderate uh, the youth and women delegates of the assembly they met for the pre assembly event. Uh, they issued a statement from the distinctive use and giving perspective in the life and mission uh, of Singapore. So uh, now I would like to invite uh, these two groups to present to the assembly uh, their statement. Okay. Is it ready, colleagues?
Good evening, everyone. Okay. Can I move you? Before we begin our statement, I would like to give you a set of spirits that when you go back home, you say truly the seed that bear your delegates say something. I call it power to the people. And it is a sign of revolution. This is a sign of lies to life. May we all stand up. I'd like you to put all your energy. When I say rise, you say to lie. So I'll tell you when to, 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 to sit. <laughs> If you don't have energy, you will stand up. Rise! 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 I can feel the energy, you can see it. There is a saying in Chichewa that states, and this translates to the youth and the readers of tomorrow. In response to this, say, we as the youth came to proclaim the, to the General Assembly, we are in fact the readers of today and today. We affirm the words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 21, verse 16. From the lips of the youth and infants, you, Lord, have called forth praise. Since a significant portion of CWM members worldwide are made up of young people, we are in a unique position to call forth God's praise. Regarding the theme of this assembly, Rising to Life, Jesus proclaims in John 10, 10, I have come to give life and life abundantly. We as young people must not let our age be used as a reason to disqualify us from claiming our place at the table. Indeed, as the Lord said to Jeremiah, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone. I send you and say whatever I command you. We have come to this assembly to answer to this call and let our prophetic voices be heard. We, the youth, in discerning the signs of the times, observe many pressing issues. First of all, there is an apathy for religion. Instead of believing in God or not believing in God, most of our generation choose to not care either way, with apathy towards religion. Losing the meaning given through Jesus in the search for a new way of digital social life the result is the rising mental health crisis in anxiety, loneliness, and depression. Secondly, we the youth observe an increased disparity in our communities, seen in homelessness, refugee crisis, xenophobia, racism, sexism, authoritarianism, and other life-denying systems of oppression. 
We are taught to love, but we are not taught how to love. We are taught the standard for justice, but not how to do so. Why does society is apathetic to the need of others?